think I don't even finish. Like she's no. been saying so many things. You understand? And I said my own thing, and she's she, she's very very stupid. <laughs> if she say I showered in my eye, I think I actually explained that the first week. Mm. I said I don't belong to anybody. Mm. Mm. Myself, there is thing I, I can't do. There, there is come thing on. I cannot do. There come is no way I can go and do something. That's why I have to. This guy told me that I went on him. Imagine for a flip second that Chomzi was still seated at the dining table when Bella had called her stupid twice. What exactly do you think would have happened, guys? Tell me. What do you think would have happened? <laughs> you think they would have sang Kumbaya or they probably would have sang the holy hymns from the Bible and then gone to bed just like that? Hell no. See, those two people, they would have entered a very, very crazy, insane, heated argument. Guys, it would have been crazy, it would have been bloody because the two persons in question, they never back down from an argument. The two persons in question, they are very, very hot-tempered, they are rude. The things that come out of, the, out of your mouth, guys, it's scary, <laughs> especially when they're having issues with people. Now, another side to it is that Shags would have stepped in. Of course, we've seen how Shags has stepped in on more than one occasion when Bella had actually looked for someone's trouble and then he you know, in a bit to want to defend this woman, would come in and start, you know, going at the other person. And guess what? Elo Swags would not have been able to defend Chomzi. Why? Because, in a way, it seems as though he's scared of Shags. And aside that, he does not even really have a stand in the whole matter. Because, guys, Chomzi has not really given him the green lights that, okay, fine, we're, we're, we're now a couple in this house, we're now an item. But that is not the crux of the matter of this particular issue between Bella and Chomzi that almost became an issue last night. It all boils down to what we've talked about on this channel before, how friends address each other. What Bella said, in as much as I kind of agree with her, because to be very honest, Chomzi actually did act stupid, yes, because during that old game, that old question and answers podcast thing they were doing last night, yeah, Chomzi and Chichi had actually started it, they had instigated it, they had been entering people's privacies, you know, dragging people out, saying a lot of crazy things, you know, they put Doin on the spot, they had put um, Deji on the spot, they had put Adikuli on the spot, they had put Rachel on the spot, they had put Elo, so they, they had almost put every single housemate, even Giddy Fire and Diana, they had put almost everybody on the spot, but then when it got to Chomzi's turn, she had taken off this countenance of seriousness, like, oh, I said, I don't belong to anybody. Mm. <laughs> Excuse me, no, I have, I have something to say. No, I have some no, questions. Okay. Question. No, my question now goes like this. You just said it here that the, on, that the only reason why there is no sheep going on is because he has a decided. That's not no, what I'm saying. That's, 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 that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. So, indeed, I kind of agree with Bella, 100%. Chandy kind of acts as stupid. Because when she was reciprocating that energy to other people, they all laughed about it. Nobody picked offense. Yes, nobody. But then when it got to her turn, she wanted to come and start playing. Oh, nobody should come for me, blah, blah, blah. However, in as much as I agree with Bella, I like Bella was wrong. Because to be very honest, you do not attack a friend of the family like that in public. Yeah, when I say friend of the family, Chomzi is friends with Bella and Shex. So she's like... A friend of the couple yeah so I was expecting that if Bella indeed had issues with um, Chomzi's resistance to the whole game right she should have called Chomzi aside and squashed the issue with Chomzi yeah so I did not really agree with Bella on that but you know what guys I feel like this intro has become too lengthy there's a lot more that happened last night I'm also gonna be touching up on the um, Giddy Fire and Diana conversation I touched up on it a little bit on my previous video if you missed out on that video just go to the comment section check the first pinned comment and you can follow the link right there to check out that video all right it was all about the pool party and how the game started all right now um before i now continue with this conversation before i continue with this analysis of all of last night's shenanigans let me officially welcome all of you back to my youtube channel hi you're welcome back you are welcome back to my youtube channel my name is glory elijah this is frankly speaking with glory and i am the girl with the t and hey happy tgif guys listen two major announcements right now 
don't forget tomorrow is saturday so you know what happens on here guys it's that time for us to catch up and express ourselves to vent to rant to banter you know to just basically have conversations about all that we have been observing all through the week especially from the ongoing big brother ninja season 7 level up edition all right so please it's called our fswg saturday youtube live stream it happens on this channel every saturday by 3 p.m wat so please wherever you are whatever you're doing kindly add us to your schedule all right add us there please make it a date with us do not miss out trust me you you don't want to miss out for anything in the world and hey feel free to invite people it's not only for a selected few it's for everybody all right and another thing is if you are new on here if this is your first time of seeing this video this content please do not forget to do exactly what you see on your screen all right once you do so you will become a bona fide part of this amazing family this is a family of intellectuals we express ourselves over here and you also be able to receive a lot of my videos whenever i upload a new one. you are a returning viewer a returning subscriber thank you so much for being the realest OG and um, if this is your first time subscribing I noticed that we've been having an influx of new subscribers thank you so much for finding us worthy of joining this family as I said earlier I kind of agree with Bella yes <laughs> I really do agree with Bella but then for the fact that you know Chomzi is considered as her friend or she and Shex they consider Chomzi as a friend she shouldn't have told that line you know of insult with Chomzi and guys she was quite lucky that Chomzi was not at the table. It was after she had said all what she said that Chomzi had returned back, right? So, um, what happened afterwards? Shags had had a conversation with her later, which I really did appreciate. When you've said what you've said, and she reacted in a weird way, because you're a confident person, you kept saying it. You didn't need to keep saying it. Because you're very smart. So you're, you've clocked already that this is making this person uneasy. I'm her friend. I loved the fact that Shags was able to call her out on her bullshit afterwards, yes. However, I was kind of upset because I felt like, come, Shags, this relationship or whatever it is you are doing, it cannot be one-sided because when you mess up out there, you you literally stand your ground that you are right. So it seems like Bella cannot really call Shags out on his bullshit, but then Shags always seems like he's the smartest person in the room, like he's the um, old wise or wise old Methuselah that can actually call Bella out on her bullshit, you know? But he did anyways, he did, and she accepted her wrong, and he, she said that she was gonna talk to Chomzi much later. And um, also, Chomzi later on, now had a conversation with Shags about it. Her personality, you know she's weird, her personality is different, but she's learning, she's she great. She again, she had called me stupid, mm -hmm. it should have been a different thing. Yeah. I would have um, kept back, I would have she felt really bad she felt really bad you know considering the fact that she bella and shex they they spend time together you know having conversations and they have this mutual kind of respect for each other you know they try not to cross each other's boundaries because they know that each and every single one of them in that clique is a fire brand you come for me i come for you you give me bass i give you water water you know that kind of thing so she felt really bad and shex had apologized to her um, on behalf of Bella and I'd made excuses for Bella that listen, you know, she's weird and behavior is kind of different and she's working on herself, you know, so my apologies, she's going to talk to you much later. So I really liked, you know, that moment, you know, the fact that Shags was able to apologize to Chomzi on behalf of Bella. Now, moving on to the Giddy Fire and Diana's conversation. Uh, this is what yeah, I did. because she was really high that day. You were high. Don't touch me. No, please, 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 the video I dropped yesterday on my channel, we talked about how the show, Big Brother Niger, thrives on narratives. Not just Big Brother, but reality TV shows in general thrives on narratives, right? It depends on the kind of narrative the housemates are pushing out to us, the viewers, simply because they want to canvas for support. Or it also depends on the kind of narratives that us, the viewers out there, we drop here and there online, right? To show our support for a fave or just to probably basically express our own opinion about the show. So last night the thing between diana and giddy fire it was still about narrative a kind of dirty ugly narrative that diana was unconsciously 
pushing about Giddy Fire. Now she was just yapping her mouth. She probably did not think that it was a big deal. But then Giddy Fire had caught up to it immediately and had quickly thought about it in a fifth second that no, if I allow this girl to continue talking about this thing the way she's talking about it, then people are gonna tag me a predator. People are gonna tag me, you know, the kind of man that takes advantage of a woman when she is in a most vulnerable state. She told me she remembered. She told me she remembered. Do you know when I was telling her stop? I said it. I said stop, take it easy, you're not okay. She came and she apologized. And you're not saying this. I know no, it's a joke, but come on. It's true, it's true. It's true, it's true. Sorry. Don't joke like that. Come on. Now, now, what am I talking about? Um, on Saturday, during the party, Diana had been drunk. Yeah, she had been dead drunk. And she had been dancing with um, Kitty Fire at some point. And then later, she was dancing with Farm Savvy. Now, for a moment, she and Farm Savvy, they disappeared. Um, eyewitness account from the level one house and even from the level two house said that both of them they had gone to the toilet that they did not know what was going on in the toilet now guys i don't know because i wasn't there inside the toilet with them but now the gist coming up later was that diana was really drunk and um giddy fire had gone ahead to go and take care of her in the toilet and diana had put herself on giddy fire and was kissing him and now he was trying to hold her back you know telling her that listen you can't be doing this because you're not in your normal state of mind she had continued kissing him now according to giddy fire he had hidden that information from the rest of the house because he respects diana so much by virtue of the fact that both of them they are very good friends he respects her a lot he does not want their business to be out there in the open also considering the fact that she is the oldest this entire season so he does not want to create that impression that oh being the oldest she does not know how to handle herself or even manage her alcohol level so to his biggest surprise last night during the whole play the whole question and answer tag thing diana had taken her time to start saying even though they were all guys i mean let's not get it wrong they were all joking but she had taken her time to explain that imagine this guy coming to come and kiss me and then he now acting as if he did not kiss me i mean i did no 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 like she was painting that kind of narrative and guys chichi chichi really amplified everything you ever deny something like this so now you make it kiss me that doesn't know, I don't if know you that kiss that her you're supposed to even let her know that uh, do you know we kiss <laughs> last night <laughs> And hey. the man. He understands. Mm. Mm. Chichi with her loud voice kept on shouting that hey, it's not good now. Be a man. If you kissed her, you should say that you kissed her. By the way, can I just ask her a favor from the sound managers, the sound engineers of this show? Because whenever Chichi is screaming mm, at the top of her lungs, the way she was screaming last night, could you please reduce the volume of her microphone? Because that girl, her voice gave me a headache. I can still hear the sound of her voice in my head right now and it's not even funny so please i am begging just a little favor when she's speaking it's all well and good because she already has a high-pitched voice but whenever she's screaming the way she was really excited last night please big brother please just reduce the volume of her microphone not to deviate too much Chichi was actually amplifying everything and she was dragging and dragging the narrative and other people were laughing but it was obvious that they were looking at Giddy Fire in a different way and that was when Giddy Fire got upset and immediately he changed it that no this is unacceptable and then he went ahead to reveal everything exactly the way it happened now while he was about to speak Diana was now running to him to go and beg him to stop talking I said hey, so now you have shame Oh, now you know what shame truly means. But he did not stop speaking. He went ahead to speak his truth. And what he said was that no, that it was the other way around. That Diana had been the one that pounced on him and was kissing him. And because he did not want to shame her, he did not want to, you know, reveal their secret. He, he literally decided to keep it as a secret. He didn't want to paint her in a bad light, you know. But his own concern is about the millions of people out there that are watching the show right now and then they are hearing such a narrative they're going to run with it you know and label him as a predator a sexual predator and that's exactly what he does not want you know out there about himself and that was when chichi now retraced her steps and was like ha uh -uh, diana you two you should have said it now she was supposed to say oh, i know i know what i did you understand uh, 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 you Let's kiss your brush don't be crying you know keep her saying <laughs> I kiss you, kiss your crush. You not keep her seen. I'm like, come on, Chichi, Chichi, you're such, you're such a, you're such a very annoying instigator. Because guys, I mean, a second ago she was literally dragging Giddy Fire. Then the next minute she was dragging Diana. But I love, love, love the fact that 
Giddy Fire addressed it right there and then at the table. Afterwards, they had gone to the bathroom area where he had like seriously vented, you know, at Diana because he was really disappointed. But trust me, you don't want to push something like that because I was messed up at that time. Anything we for happen for just happen. I'm serious. Yeah, just die the matter and as much challenge for that. Okay, he felt betrayed. He felt like, nah, this is one person I have been protecting in this house. Regardless of the age difference between us, no, you cannot push such, you know, disgusting narratives about me. So he made sure that he let her know that he's very, very disappointed in her. And she kept on apologizing, apologizing, apologizing. And then, just probably to appease the God, she now like, oh, what do you want me to cook for you? Oh, the guy cleared her. The guy said, don't worry, I'm fine. I'm fine. And then he walked away and then much later he was having good conversations with Rachel. Question of this video, what do you think about the Bella and Chumzy situation? Do you think that Bella was right in calling Chumzy stupid twice, you know, at the dining table where there were other housemates present? Do you think that she would have handled it better by calling Chumzy aside, you know, to address a sentiment you know about Chomzi's attitude towards the entire game and um, just go ahead and let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section below and i'll see you guys on another video soon have an amazing day bye <laughs>